Hey there and welcome to the first part in this tutorial series taking you through the basics and some of the more advanced concepts for building in Space Engineers starting with the fundamentals of building ships. The majority of this tutorial will focus on small grid ships which are cheaper than large grid ships and much smaller. A small grid armor block is 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5 meters whereas a large grid armor block is 2.5 by 2.5 by 2.5 meters. To start with, we will focus on spacefaring ships, as I would suggest that your first playthrough be carried out on the crashed red ship scenario. My demo area for this tutorial is based on the lone survivor scenario, so later I will quickly cover atmospheric ships and what they require as well. So, starting with the absolute minimum requirements for a small grid ship, you will need a control seat or a cockpit. This is a position to control the ship from. The orientation of the block determines the front of the ship. Thrusters for space, either ion thrusters or hydrogen thrusters, the latter of which requires hydrogen gas as fuel. For omnidirectional control, you'll need at least one thruster in each of the six primary directions. So based on this ship, you will have forwards, backwards, left, right, up and down. For the tutorial, we will mostly be using ion thrusters first, as these only require power to function. After that, a quick demonstration of hydrogen powered ships. Gyroscope. This block enables pitch, yaw and roll control of your ship. The more you have, the faster your ship will change orientation. One gyroscope on a heavy ship will turn very slowly, so work to find a good balance. The gyroscope can also have its power reduced if one gyroscope is too powerful. Battery or reactor. You should have at least one battery on a ship, either as a primary power source, supplemental power source or as a backup. A nuclear reactor was the very first power source in Space Engineers and has excellent output, but does require refined uranium as a fuel source. Solar panels can be added to your ships as supplemental power as well. Connector. This block will enable you to attach to another grid. For instance, your home base or another ship or vehicle. When connected, your craft can recharge its batteries from the grid you are connected to, which is useful for ships powered solely by battery. The connector will also aid in cargo transfer if you have cargo containers aboard. Cargo containers. For small grid, these come in three sizes of small, medium and large. And for large grid, they come in small and large size. These are used for the storage of all your ores, ingots, components and whatever else you might have. But for the minimum to be scouting around, this is pretty much all you need. You can go a little more advanced by using a seat, remote control block combo to save on the cockpit materials, but we'll save that for later. As a minor note, if you do opt for hydrogen thrust, you will need at least one hydrogen tank, plus a full conveyor system linking the tank to each thruster, plus a means to convert ice into hydrogen, which again we will cover later. Here you can see a large grid equivalent of the small ship, though the large grid version will cost a lot more in resources and also looks a lot worse. Pretty much everybody will build the thrusters symmetrical apart from forward thrust, which tends to be a little more than every other direction, but you don't have to do that. Regardless of where the thrusters are placed, they will push in that direction. This example has a thruster way out to the side, but you can see it has no impact on how the thrust is employed, meaning that the center of thrust is always aligned through the center of mass as long as you're not dealing with subgrids, which can complicate things. In Kerbal Space Program, the center of thrust is not automatically aligned with the center of mass. Then as you thrust, your ship will rotate or turn around the center of mass. Long story short, Space Engineers simplifies thrust propulsion, meaning you can put your thrusters wherever you want to. This next example has a thruster on a subgrid. Let's see what happens when we fire the ship's thrusters. As we thrust towards the right, you can see this large thruster on the hinge does absolutely nothing. This is because subgrid thrusters cannot be controlled in the conventional sense without the use of overrides or scripts. The mass of the subgrid can definitely impact on the ship's handling, so make sure that subgrids aren't heavier than the items that they're connected to. As we just mentioned, we can control the subgrid thruster with an override function and combine that with the hinge movement, so let's do that and see what happens. On the toolbar, I have thruster override, increase and decrease. So the more I hit 4, you'll notice the large grid thruster will start making firstly more noise, but you'll see a larger plume. And then if I really want to, I can flip things over and it will completely screw over the thrust and direction. And you can see my speed tumbling right down. Uh, basically, you have to turn this off all the way in order to retain control. So you disable the thruster 
and then dampen is back on and I seem to have turned my thrusters off so there we go we're slowing down again when your thrusters are set to override you need a lot more dampening force from the main grid to actually counter the override be careful using thruster override on subgrids if your main grid thrusters aren't enough to counteract or you may end up having a really big crash so the ships i have shown so far have all been ion thrust powered so let's take a look at a hydrogen ship so this ship is a bit bigger and capable of hauling cargo as well as a good amount of hydrogen for itself I've used the small, small grid conveyors to convey the hydrogen to the small thrusters. The cargo can be loaded and or unloaded from the side connectors as the rear thruster is a small grid large thruster and in the way. Additional components include oxygen and hydrogen generator for converting ice into hydrogen fuel and oxygen and a tank for each gas. There's an antenna for real-time location information if I leave the ship, an ore detector, a camera, and a spotlight. So overall, you can see it's a bit more complicated in design, but a bit more powerful than an ion ship, and that hydrogen thrusters won't deplete my ship's batteries. What you'll probably end up building at some point is a mining ship. It's vital for expansion early on. You'll seek out iron to get you started, but you'll also need more materials. So let's take a look at a basic mining ship and what it will require. So we've gone with an ion based propulsion ship as we don't want to take up loads of space with hydrogen tanks plus you need ice to be converted into hydrogen in the first place for that kind of ship to work. It's a pretty basic design with two drills conveyed into a small grid large cargo container with a connector on the underside. Or fits through small conveyors unlike most block components that require small grid large conveyors. Ion thrusters bolted all the way around the ship are enough to keep us moving when full in order to haul over 60,000 kilos of iron ore which will be refined into around 36,000 kilos of iron ingots depending on your configuration. When starting out there is no harm in mining stone as it will refine into gravel, iron, nickel and silicon but later on you will want to avoid stone because you'll just end up with so much of it. Though we are focusing on ion and hydrogen ships, I will quickly touch on atmospheric ships as the principles are the same except you need to switch the use of the ion thrusters for atmospheric thrusters. You will need atmospheric thrusters on celestial bodies that have an atmosphere, surprise surprise. Ion thrusters essentially do not work in an atmosphere, so it isn't really worth trying to use them. There is no harm in combining hydrogen thrust and atmospheric thrust, but be aware though that atmospheric thrust will not get you all the way into space as air density decreases with altitude. So once again, starting with the absolute minimum requirements for a small grid ship, you would need a control or cockpit, thrusters, so like ion thrusters, atmospheric thrusters require only power to function, so chances are your craft will have a number of batteries to begin with. These thruster types are opposite to each other, so ions don't work in atmosphere and atmospheric thrusters don't work in space. A final note on atmospheric thrusters is that I don't tend to put downwards facing thrusters on my atmospheric ships as gravity will pull you down, so you may want to use more upward thrust to compensate. As always, you'll also need a gyroscope, batteries or other forms of power, and a connector. Finally, I will cover conveyor mechanics because for small grid, there are two sizes of conveyor, whereas for large grid, there is just one. Every item fits through the large grid conveyors, which keeps things simple. There are many shapes you can use and a few utility conveyor pieces, such as a sorter, which will only permit or block selected items from passing through them. You can either use a blacklist or a whitelist setup. A blacklist is to prevent certain items from passing through, for example blocking ice and ores if you're trying to keep resources and components separate. Whitelisting will only allow selected items to pass through. Using the same example, you can whitelist only ingots and ores, which will subsequently mean that components will be blocked. Sorter blocks are not required for regular conveyor networks, only if you need to fine tune your conveyor networks and overthink them a little bit. As mentioned, there are two sizes. The smaller size will only permit ores, ingots, gas, and some ammunition types to pass through them. Building components can only pass through the larger small grid conveyor. This is why the welder and grinder blocks have large port conveyors and no small ports. On screen you can see which items fit through the conveyor sizes with these examples. Here you can see on the left we have the large cargo container in red and also in red the medium cargo container. So if I go to the control panel and hit drain all on the sorter 
And now we will see the passing of the items from the large cargo container that can fit through the small conveyor into the medium container. With this blue example using the larger conveyor, you can see that pretty much everything starts to pass through with no questions asked whatsoever. There are several small grid conveyor converter blocks which enable the size switch which is ideal for multi-purpose ships and connecting hydrogen thrusters. So you can see in the middle we have the large conveyor which has small ports on it and on the near side we have a much smaller converter which has multiple small ports and one large. Conveyors display four different colored states based on their situation, so we'll cover that now. If your conveyor pipes have green lights, then all is good and there are no problems in the network. If your pipes have yellow lights, then that section isn't connected to anything at one end. Yellow lights will also show this status, even if the grid is unpowered. If red lights are showing, then the conveyor is connected properly, but has no power to transfer items, as you can see here. And finally, if the light is black or blank, then the conveyor is damaged and will not function. So to summarize the fundamentals of building a ship, here is a list of blocks that you will use on the majority of your ships that you build in Space Engineers. And this list can also be used as a reference list. So starting with a battery, a reactor, a cockpit, a gyroscope, cargo containers, conveyors, connector, solar panels, landing gears, antennas, camera, and ore detectors. Not every ship will need every item and you'll never always need everything in one go unless you're building one all-in-one mega base type thing. But as a general list it's pretty solid. To finish off I will go through some more advanced functions you can employ from your ships. Earlier I mentioned that you don't necessarily need to build a cockpit to get your ship moving. What you can do instead is build an antenna, a remote control and a passenger seat. In the example here, I have just bolted some thrusters to some batteries with the required blocks on top. Be sure to place the remote control block in the correct orientation, which requires the square light to face the front of the ship and the two white triangles to also face the front of the ship but be pointing upwards or else the controls might not be what you expect. You then get in the passenger seat, open up the control screen, go to remote access and engage the small grid through the control button. You can then fly your ship around without having to actually use a cockpit because you're using the remote control block and antenna. Just be sure that your ship's broadcasting is switched on, which it should be by default. Once you've got yourself established, you can level up your mining ship by adding sorters and ejector blocks. If you whitelist stone and have the ejector block set to eject at all times, it will dispose of any stone you collect while mining. So here you can see on this edge of this ore vein, we've got iron ore on the right in red and stone in grey and as you can see underneath the little ejector is just popping out the stone because we want to get rid of it so we can get as much iron ore as we can. I have the drills grouped on the hotbar so that I can use them on number two to just switch them on so I don't have to hold down mouse one or your action button. And finally if you're wanting to clear a large area without properly obtaining the resources you can just mouse two or your alternate action button to remove huge swaths of material very quickly. This can be done with any drill block plus the hand drill. When using the hand tools, if you double mouse one, it will keep the tool switched on without you having to hold it down. So this just about wraps up part one of this tutorial series. Next time we'll look more in depth at power mechanics covering nuclear, solar, hydrogen and wind. I want to thank you very much for watching and make sure to click the video on screen for part two and have a great day.